But you might have seen from my stories a little bit late because again, I was a bit occupied last night. So you might have seen from my stories that this, actually the next few weeks, more than a few weeks, are going to be about a single series of paintings and two clues. First clue, Hogarth, and second clue, terrible marriages, or terrible marriage in this case. Um, so, you can probably guess what the uh, the series of works are, is going to be. Um, and if you haven't, then here we go. This is the first one. So we're going to be talking about Hogarth's marriage à la mode, the, the fashionable marriage, mariage à la mode, fashionable marriage. Um, so this is one, this is the first of a series of paintings that Hogarth did. They're all in the National Gallery in London. Um, and he created these around about 1743. Obviously there are, not obviously, but there are six paintings. So, you know, that, that time is approximate, so over those years. Um, and I was going to do two per session. Can you hear my chair squeaking? It's really squeaky. I hope the microphone isn't picking that up. <laughs> I'm like, um, anyway, I was going to do two per session, um, but I realised there's so much to say about them. They're so fabulous and bawdy and naughty and satirical and, and funny that I thought, well, do you know what? one a week. They deserve it. They deserve it. So this is the first one in a a, a bit of a, a, a drama, really. Um, and this is called The Marriage Settlement. So the basically there the, the, the are, the are sort of almost two sections of this image. Um, the first one which is, indicates what is actually going on here, is this section here with these two gentlemen sitting at a table and, um, and, and, a, and a guy in between them. So what is going on? So it's called the marriage settlement and the gentleman on the right hand side who is sort of gesturing to himself um, is the Earl of Squander or Earl Squanderfield he's sometimes referred to um, who has invited this negotiation to take place in, I'm going to pull out and show you the, the entire painting again. He's invited this entire negotiation to take place in his bedroom. Yes, this is his bedroom. How do we know it's his bedroom? It's a very busy, sort of cluttered, clustered room. Um, lots of things on the walls, um, but we know that things on the walls, <laughs> they're called paintings, aren't they? Oh, um, but we know that it's his bedroom um, because of this canopied bit of furniture over on the um, on the right hand side of the painting. He's sort of almost beneath the the, the canopied bit, bit of furniture, and that is in fact his bed. Um, so you might be thinking, well, that's quite unusual. Why would he be holding such an important meeting in his bedroom? Um, he's holding it in his bedroom because actually bedrooms weren't the private places that they are today back in the 18th century. They were quite public and if you had a splendid canopied bed as the Earl of Squander um, appears to have in this image, um, then why wouldn't you show it off? So natural thing to do invite everybody into your bedroom to um, to negotiate a marriage contract. I know what you're thinking at this stage. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, how do I know he's called the Earl of Squander? Well, I know that because Hogarth painted these images to be engraved, specifically to be engraved. I mean, he worked the images up um, very well, very meticulously, as you can as you can see, um, but the engravings were the important things, um, and then so from the engravings, prints were made, and so they could be sold um, to to the the masses. Basically, everyone could 
not everybody, but if you had a little bit of money, then you could afford to buy a print. And so they came with little captions. And in the captions, Hogarth has named the characters. So we know that this is the, the Earl of Squander. So let's go back to this um, kind of key scene. The Earl of Squander is sitting at this table, gesturing himself in his bedroom. And on the other side of the table is an alderman who is looking rather keenly at a pile of money that is sort of has been pushed over the table um, to, or, you know, to, towards the, the Earl of Squander. And there's a, a, a guy in the, in the centre looking um, quite dour and, um, you know, perhaps um, a little bit like he's also looking at the money quite keenly as well. He is sort of brokering this contract, which is a marriage contract, and we know it's a marriage contract because the alderman to the, the left of this image is actually holding a, a big piece of, um, of, of folded paper, so a big contract that says marriage right on the front of it. Um, the negotiations seem to be going quite well uh, because there's a candle in the middle of the table and the candle is lit in the middle of the day, which would suggest that they are at the stage um, in which the, the seals can be signed. So they're going to um, to use the, the, the candle to melt some wax to then put the, the, the seal on the contract. So it will be signed and sealed. So, okay, that's fine. What's the deal between these two men? Um, we've got a, a big pile of money being pushed in the direction of the Earl of Squander. And we've got the Earl of Squander who is pointing, who is gesturing first of all to himself, and then he's gesturing this tree thing on this on this scroll that's rolling off the chair next to him. Um, and let me just bring that up a little bit closer so that you can see it. Um, there we go. Okay, so the scroll. So basically, he is pointing out his family tree. It's quite a crude family tree because basically, what we've got, and this is this is, I think, a lovely sign of Hogarth's sense of humour. What we've got is a medieval knight, perhaps, and I'm going to say definitely William the Conqueror, who's kind of lying there, and he's got basically a tree growing out of his stomach, um, and it's I mean, well, it's a ridiculous family tree. It doesn't really tell us anything apart from the fact that the Earl of Squander is indicating to this alderman that, um, yes, indeed, he should be paid this very, very large amount of money for this, uh, this marriage contract between his daughter um, and, oh, sorry, his son and, and the alderman's daughter, who we will meet in a second, um, because he has this fabulous family lineage that, um, that anybody would be incredibly um, proud and privileged to become part of. I mean, you know, seriously, it's all really quite dodgy. So, Okay, so the alderman is giving all this money to the Earl of Squander. Um, he's actually got an empty, you can see. Um, so if you've got the, the alderman right in the centre in the, in the red coat, there's, there's sort of something on the, on the floor by his chair, um, and that is actually a pretty much empty bag of money. There are just a few coins spilling out, the ones that, uh, that the Earl of Squander hasn't claimed as, uh, for, as, as, the, as the dowry. Um, but you might be thinking, okay, that's all, that's all fine, you know, so the alderman wants to buy the lineage um, and the Earl of Squander wants the money, but the Earl of Squander, I mean, he doesn't seem to be desperate for money, does he? I mean, you know, taste take a quick little look at him again. Um, 
a bandaged foot up on a footstool and then um, then there's a pair of crutches um, just to the other side of the chair there. Well, what does that suggest to you? That suggests to me that he has a nasty case of gout and you don't get gout living on a vegan diet and being teetotal, do you? No, you live a diet that is full of very rich food and lots of alcohol. Okay, so that's the that's the first thing. Um, secondly, I mean, he, secondly, he's got a, a place that is um, so um, beautiful. He's got a, a bedroom rather that is so beautiful that he's got this canopy bed that he wants to show off. And then also, he's got all of these paintings around the room. Um, so you know, he's clearly got quite a bit of money. And the the paintings are interested uh, interesting in this. I'll actually um, I'll elaborate a little bit more in um, in my blog post. But I just want to show you the biggest painting. Um, which is this one, which is indeed a portrait of the Earl of Squander himself. So very, very self-regarding, as if we didn't know that already. Um, but again, this is kind of Hogarth playing with us. This is Hogarth at his best. He um, he actually um, had a real thing about portraitists. Um, he a uh, foreign portraitists, portrait artists, um, you know, he felt that um, <laughs> he, he would get on his high horse about the likes of Holbein and Van Dyck, you know, why can't we use English people? Um, um, and he would um, quite often sign um, portraits um, with W. Hogarth, um, Ang Anglus, or sort of old English word for English anyway. Hogarth English, basically, um, so quite, quite, quite pointed. Um, and this one, so in the mid eighteenth century, a portrait artist from France called Van Luce was, as in Van Lu, um, was um, very popular. And so this is a portrait of the Earl of Squander in the style of Van Lu. Um, so yeah, so he's kind of he's he's kind of having a pop at everybody here. Even though he also hated painting portraits, he called it um, what did it a fizzog fizzog mongering. That's what he called it, fizzog mongering. He didn't like it at all. So, but you know, he complained if other people did it, but he didn't like doing it himself. He was a bit irascible, Hogarth. I didn't know that anyway. So, all you know, all of this wealth, this fabulous room he's got a portrait of himself you know why does he need more money well here is the clue well a can a man like him ever have enough money um, and b take a look at this little detail um sorry i've got to find there we go um this little detail so this is a close-up so here we've got so you've got the Earl of Squander in the bottom um, right hand corner and then you've got the uh, the, 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 the broker um, in the the left and then the guy in the middle is holding something and staring out of the window into this square with a very very grand house that is in the process of being constructed um, on the other side of the square and all very fancy with its um, um, columns and uh, and balconies and you know and it's, it's all it's all really rather grand um, the document or the the the, um, the 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 thing that the guy who's looking out the window the thing that he's holding if you could read the writing you would read that it says um, the project for the new building or something similar um, so clearly this is meant to be the Earl of Squander's new house so he's having an even grander place built which of course is going to mean money so Yes, thank you very much. I will take your money. You can take my son um, or your daughter can take my son and I will take your money. Um, and the architect, of course, is also, you know, yep, let's get this marriage done because uh, I am definitely going to need as much money as I can possibly lay my hands on for this project and for lining my own pockets, no doubt. Um, so, 
a win-win for everybody. So this is a marriage that is taking place um, between somebody who can offer a title and somebody or a family who can offer a title and a family who can offer money. So it's happy days, everyone's happy, everyone's a winner, apart from the poor couple who are actually getting married, who I haven't talked about yet, but let's take a look at them because I think if you were in any doubt before, um, you might not be now when you take a look at them. Um, this is most certainly not a marriage of love. Um, it is absolutely a marriage of convenience. The title, marriage a la mode, it's sort of, it's again, Hogarth having a little pop at um, families who, arranged marriages still did happen, quite often, especially amongst the, uh, the, the higher echelons of society. Um, but Hogarth, I think, is saying, you know, really? Really? Um, and as we go on in the story, we'll see that it was a very, very, very bad idea indeed. Um, so here we have the unhappy couple-to-be who are facing away from each other. So the guy in the blue on the um, left-hand side of the painting is the Earl of Squander's son, who is all dressed up. I mean, you can definitely see where the money goes. I mean, look at his very, very fancy clothes. He's all dressed up actually in the French style and he's looking out and you can't see it so well in the painting, but in the engravings, you can see that he's looking into a mirror. So he's, he's looking at himself in the mirror instead of paying any attention at all to his bride-to-be. Um, he's got a box of snuff, so he's um, he's about to take his little bit of snuff as well. You know, he is really thinking he is something. The poor young lady, on the other hand, who is the alderman's daughter, so the, uh, um, what would he be, Viscount Squanderfield, is um, he's he's the one with the title. The, uh, the young lady is the one with the family money. Um, and she's distraught. And well, she might be taking a look at him. Um, you know, she's there, she's pale as anything, isn't she? Pale in her misery with her hanky in her in her hands. Um, but she's being consoled rather solicitously by a gentleman who we know to be called Silver Tongue. He's a lawyer, so he's persuading her, darling, you know, no, not darling, you wouldn't call her that, you know, my dear, everything is going to be fine, this marriage is for the best, or maybe he's just kind of schmoozing her because he has a feeling that it's not going to be a happy marriage and maybe he will get a chance later. Mm. Anyone know the story already? I'm sure many of you do. Um, so we're definitely going to meet Silver Tongue a bit later on. Um, so, yeah not great and there's one final thing can you see there's a, it looks like it might be a blob on the canvas but on um on our lovely viscount's neck there is a bit of a blob so not only is he dressed beautifully in the french style it also seems that he is bringing the french disease to proceedings right in the very first painting so I'm afraid we have got another few weeks of this. I'm not afraid at all. I'm delighted these are fantastic paintings, but it is basically a summer of syphilis. I realised that as I'd written this. I was like, oh, my favourite subject <laughs> once again, somehow. I don't know. How have I got so obsessed with syphilis? Um, it's a bit terrible, isn't it, really? So there we go. So this is the first of a series of paintings. Um, and I think, I haven't got a close up of them, but I think we know that everything is gonna go very, very downhill. Um, if you take a look at the dogs, I'll put up, um, obviously this would be on my blog post, but if you take a look at the dogs in the right hand corner, they can't look at each other either. Sorry, in the left hand corner, but bottom left corner. Uh, they can't look at each other either, but they are also chained together. So it's not very auspicious. This is not an auspicious start. Um, the exchange of money and title, absolutely no love at all between this young couple. Um, and 
and um, and a few sort of foreshadowings um, of you know sort of um, yeah inauspicious foreshadowings of, um, of of what might be to come. So watch next week for the next in the saga of Hogarth's marriage a la mode. For now, have a great day, have a great weekend, and I will see you next Tuesday at 11 o'clock. Take care. Thanks for joining. Bye.